Hello, this is Brian Shannon from alphatrends.net. Today is Monday, the 11th of February, 2008, and the market's closed. Uh, the S&P 500 finished with a gain of 81 cents on the spiders, or 0.61%. And uh, the volume tra trailed off again in here today on this strength. So you can't really have too much faith in the strength in this down market. We do still have a declining 10, 20, 50, and 200-day moving average. But from an intraday standpoint, it was pretty impressive that uh, we had some initial selling due to some fears uh, from one of the banking or you know insurance companies actually but the, the market was able to get back above the daily VWAP right here and that's where they took control for the day and kept control of it for their uh, entire session as it was uh, a nice series of higher highs and higher lows in here and kind of just drifted uh, into the close but was able to hold on to those gains and remain above the daily VWAP so uh, from a very short term standpoint that's positive we've also got it above the two day VWAP and the three day uh, average price as well but it's struggling with the five day average price at this point um, when we look at the 10 minute time frame you can see we've still got a declining five day moving average but it might start flattening out here so it's looking a little bit more encouraging here on the intraday time frames but again the lighter volume here on the daily time frame says don't have a lot of faith in it but we always want to be aware of any and all possibilities. The obvious uh, most important level of support remains down near 132. If the market can stay above there, then perhaps uh, it can continue to, to uh, you know, hold on to the strength and, and maybe turn into something. Uh, in particular, if it gets above, uh, I guess this was uh, maybe last Thursday's high right here at about 135 and then we've got uh, you know this level where the gap was there's gonna there's there's likely to be a lot of uh, little resistance levels along the way but if this market can hold above this five-day moving average the five-day moving average flattens out maybe we'll see that it, it gets tested again like it did over here and then perhaps it can start to turn higher if that's the case well then we can look at uh, for instance on this hourly time frame you can start to make a case uh, that potentially it's in, it's it's uh, um, tracing out this inverted head and shoulders pattern on the on the uh, uh, you know over the last month or so, which would uh, look something like uh, well, it's tough to see it in here, but I guess the, something like this is is what it uh, what it would be. Um, it's still early, very early for that. There's likely to be a lot of levels of resistance again. Uh, 137 has been important. The 140 level is important. So uh, let's just keep that way in the back of our minds for now. Um, but right, uh, but but in the short term, it's just kind of more neutral in here. We had a positive close, but you know, no no real positive uh, traction for for the market today. We didn't make a you know really a higher high. I think you got to get it above again this 135 level basically. Uh, and then 134 is the important level for the uh, uh, as far as support. Now let's, let's take a look again at the average price since the Federal Reserve made their last two moves. The average price, and this is what makes this level even more important at that five-day moving average, is right now we're right about at that level, the average price since the Federal Reserve cut rate. So that's basically saying that there, it's really still anyone's game to, to, to be had here. Uh, based on you know whether you believe fight the Fed or no one's bigger than the market, so uh, we're at again a critical area. We've got mixed messages again on on different time frames. So uh, when that's the case, you go slow and you trade smaller share size. The semiconductors are just a you know they're just a broken mess. They're going to need a lot of time to heal in here. Really, it doesn't look like there's anything uh, even in the short term. Uh, worth considering as far as trade, so we won't really spend any time looking at those. The uh, Russell 2000, uh, again, let's start with the daily time frame. Again, 73 continues to be the most important level, and that's uh, you know where we've seen um, resistance uh, develop after that uh, key level of support was broken earlier in this year. We've also got the declining 50-day moving average in that area. Uh, on, the, on this daily time frame, the, the crossing of the 10 and 20-day moving average represents a little bit of indecision. It's shown that the, the short term on this time frame uh, has been taken back control by the buyers. That's the 10-day moving average. 
uh, and it's up through the declining 20-day moving average. So mixed messages here. Um, but again, the primary trend remains lower with a declining 50 and 200-day moving average. So you want to really view it very suspiciously. This market was not able to get back above that uh, declining five-day moving average. In fact, found some resistance at it intraday. You can see here. Now let's take a look at the uh, uh, the the daily chart. This is using one minute uh, candles in here. Same same pattern as the S and P. That uh, early weakness, buyers took control, uh, and were able to maintain that control. However, again, that t that five day moving average did act as resistance, and uh, that's something we're going to have to monitor uh, more closely here. On the 30 minute time frame, we've been keeping an eye on this. Uh, what's looking to be maybe even a uh, double shouldered, as they call it, uh, head and shoulder pattern. The key thing for this pattern is that breaking the neckline in here, that's where we're going to have a problem if, if, it, if it is to develop. And if, if we're to see that happen, well, then we take the height of this pattern right here and uh, we take it and subtract it from the breakdown point. That would give us a price objective down near that uh, 64 uh, 64 and a half level, which would basically test the lows that we saw in January. So, still a lot of reasons to be very cautious in here. And again, 67.50 or so should be maybe a potential level of support. As far as resistance goes, uh, you're, you're going to need to see again this thing was going to have to get at least above the $71 level before you can uh, begin to think that. Uh, we have another chance of maybe testing that 73 level that's been so important and also the location of that 50-day moving average. So uh, as long as it's between this, uh, you know, it's kind of in this no man's land basically right now, just chopping back and forth. Breaking this trend line, though, would be a negative. I think it would get a lot of people's attention and probably a test of at least this level at first, 67 and a half. And if that fails, then I think we go down to test these lows. The obvious, uh, you know, longer term uh, time frame is that uh, we're in a downtrend. So the consolidations in a downtrend usually resolve themselves in the direction of the primary trend, which is lower and the lighter volume in here also indicates that the buyers just don't have the conviction that's necessary for a uh, for a real turnaround to develop. Again, though, getting above 71, I think we could see a little bit of a squeeze. So be careful uh, if you're too aggressively short that if the market you know get it gets above that 71 level, then we've got the possibility of uh, of uh, a little bit of a squeeze. Uh, developing off of this inverted head and shoulders pattern. I don't want to go too deep into these patterns within patterns and that sort of thing, but just be aware of a move above 71 could potentially uh, get get it moving back to the upside for for at least a little bit more than a tradable bounce. The Nasdaq 100 uh, was able to get above this 43 and a half, 43.65 is what we've been saying is the level. Uh, where this mar market has been finding resistance, and it's held there for the day as well. Looking at the daily time frame, though, again, the obvious thing here is very light volume, and it's rallying up to these declining moving averages with the 10 below the 20, the 20 below the 50, the 50 below the 200, and they're all declining. Really, for this market to have any, uh, you know, the biggest level of resistance is going to be this 46 level. Uh, and, and that's too far away to really even consider it over the, you know, for the next day or two. Uh, but that 46 level will be important for the next few weeks, I would imagine. We do still see this declining five-day moving average, and we've got uh, on the short-term time frame, we've still got this little pattern of higher highs and higher lows. So just because the bigger time frame is higher doesn't mean it's time to sell short until that pattern is interrupted. So as long as we have these little higher highs and higher lows, you're, you're, you know, you're going to be early if you're selling short. Um, but the odds do favor that it will continue to move back lower. Uh, let's see how this market can potentially uh, act tomorrow if the 43.65, 43.50 level uh, it, you know, is tested. I think that a failure and a move back below 43.50 is going to get the get the attention of quite a few participants in here. Um, right now, the average price since the Federal Reserve has met is basically not since they met, but since the two interest rate cuts um, is right around where we are. So there's again a lot of uh, mixed messages in this market, and you have to be prepared for anything and just you know focus on where the best action is today. Some of the solar stocks were real strong. One that I'm looking at that I'm involved in is this MCOR. 
EM, uh, M EMKR is the symbol. Looking at the weekly time frame, you can see it's uh, the monthly. You can see it's at a multiple year highs and still has some room to go. It looks like when you when you expand it. I mean, there's really not much potential for resistance till you see up up near this maybe twenty dollar level uh, on the daily time frame. It, it's it's looking like it's kind of rebuilt a nice base where it's got the ten above the twenty, the twenty above the fifty. They're all advancing. Uh, we're getting big volume on the moves higher, and there's a big short position in here that's got to be feeling uncomfortable. And uh, you know, looking at the 10-minute time frame, uh, nice little potential for a reversal pattern. I'd say if you do trade this stock, I, you know, I'm thinking the worst-case stop probably goes uh, you know about 13.95 or so.